Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've been talking about robocalls pretty much ever since I started this channel eight or nine years ago. And um, the problem, of course, is the feds know they exist. Uh, they have the power to stop them. And they generally don't. And the phone companies could stop them. I've been saying this for years. The phone companies could stop them, but the phone companies weren't doing anything about it because they're making so much money off them. And so over the years, the government's made these half-hearted attempts to stop this, uh, robocalls and things of that nature. And uh, I've mentioned before that I get a bunch every single day on every phone line I've got. And there's a couple that I find very strange. There's a couple I never answer every single day. And I recognize the uh, area code and the exchange number. And the last couple digits change every single time, but but they, they, they still call. I don't answer. And the next day they call again and I don't answer. And it's just annoying. It's annoying. Now, the number of calls I've gotten has gone up and down over the years. And I think it's lower than it used to be. It used to be quite high. But I also, you know, just have always been bothered by the fact that, you know, I'm working, my phone rings, I look over to see what it is, and oh, it's a robocall. And so I've complained about the fact that the phone companies could do something. And it was one of the earliest arguments I ever had with viewers of my channel, because I'd have a couple people say, Steve, there's nothing they can do. The phone companies cannot stop these. And in response to today's video, I've already got people right now who are starting the, the, the outline for their complaint, who are going to say, Steve, you're still wrong. There's nothing they can do. Well, it turns out that the FCC thinks they can do something. And they've basically finally come around and said, oh, yeah, there turns out the things we can do by going after the providers, which is the phone companies, and warning them that if you enable the robocallers, you're in trouble. Now, they've also raised this argument before and apparently not done much because the calls still exist. But the FCC has now warned some voice providers of severe punishment in a robocaller crackdown. The federal agency is tired of us receiving spam calls also. Courtney Jackson wrote this for CNET, and they've done a bunch of articles on this. The U.S. FCC is continuing to fight back against illegal robocalls, and by continuing, I'm not sure what they've done in the past that amounted to anything substantial, but in its latest move, the agency issued cease and desist warnings to two specific companies. They actually contacted some voice providers and said, if you let these calls go through your system, you're in trouble. So I'm glad they're doing this. According to an FCC announcement, the warning letters indicate that voice service providers, um, Siphony and Voltic, must end their apparent support of illegal robocall traffic or face serious consequences. The FCC says investigations show that these two companies have allowed illegal robocalls to originate from their networks. And as noted before, uh, it's easy to spot a robocalling operation because they're literally making billions of phone calls. And so when an average person makes, you know, a few phone calls a day, or a business might make, you know, a couple dozen phone calls, maybe 100 phone calls, depends on the size of the business, of course. But when you see one number that originates like thousands and thousands and thousands of calls in one day, you can guess that's probably a robocaller. And now, of course, why wouldn't you do anything about it? Oh, because they're paying you by the call. That's why these people weren't doing anything before. So each provider must take immediate action and inform the FCC of the active steps it's taking to mitigate illegal robocalls. If either fails to comply with steps and rules outlined in the letters, its call traffic may be permanently blocked. They may get shut down. Now, neither of these companies immediately responded to a request for comment, but the chairperson... Jessica Rosenworcel, whose name I just love to say, uh, said that the FCC's robocall response team is charged with tracking and cracking down on those annoying phone calls. Scam robocalls are more than just a nuisance. And by the way, if someone just called you to say hello, like an actual person, that's not as bad as the fact that they're trying to call and get you to answer the phone so they can rip you off. That's, of course, the real problem here. So they waste our time and resources and destroy trust in our communications network. We will continue to use every tool we have to go after this fraud and stop the bad actors responsible for these calls in their tracks. And I've mentioned that they mask the phone calls. They spoof the caller ID so that when you look at it, it's often random. They'll just pick a random number. And sometimes they'll pick a random number that looks important. 
And I got one yesterday. I was actually waiting for a phone call from somebody who works at a media outlet. They said, Steve, I'll call you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And at 1 o'clock, my phone rang. I looked down. And it said blank. I'm not going to say the name of the company. Media, Inc. And I thought, oh, that's the phone call that I'm waiting for. And I answered it. I kid you not. We'd like to talk to you about a free knee brace. Press 1 to speak to one of our healthcare specialist about getting your free knee brace. It wasn't the phone call I was expecting. And yes, they tricked me into answering it. But it was a weird coincidence that they happened to pick a number that went with a media company and the phone call came exactly at one o'clock when I was waiting for a phone call from a media company. So if you're done with receiving spammy scam phone calls, uh, you can check out the advice CNET puts up on how to stop them. So This one step right now by the FCC is they've notified two phone companies. If you let these pass through your system, you're in trouble. You're going to lose your ability to play along with the rest of the phone system. But meanwhile, the FCC does have a list of things you can do in an attempt to fight this yourself. And of course, these are meaningless, but I'll tell you what they are anyways. Don't answer calls from blocked or unknown numbers. Well, I don't answer calls from blocked numbers, but... An unknown number, if it's a spoofed number, you think you know it. That's the problem. Don't answer calls from numbers you don't recognize. <clears throat> Again, if you're running a business, that can be a crapshoot. Don't assume an incoming call is really from a local number just because it looks like it is. Understand that every single call out there can be spoofed. Don't respond to any questions that can be answered with a yes. There's some debate on this. Because you may recall that in the old days, sometimes if you called a company and changed your service with them, they might say, I need to get you saying that so I can record it for our records so that later on no one's going to argue and say, you didn't make the change. So in a second, I'm going to ask you if it's okay for us to change your service from this to this. I need you to answer in the affirmative if that's what you want to do. Okay? Okay. Hang on. I'm now recording. Mr. Johnson, do you want to change your service so that you now have the Platinum Plus service from Acme Rocket Sleds, Inc. Yes. Well, there was a time when they sent out warnings saying that companies would trick you into saying yes. Like, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And if you answered yes, they could then take that and splice that into a... That's a concern, I think, on some level, but I never heard of it being done. So, But that's what they're getting at when they say don't ever answer a question yes. So if you legitimately wanted to know, uh, if somebody, you know, somebody's asking you, um, can you hear me? You could just say, I hear you. But that's probably an advanced move to remember that three days from now when the phone rings. <laughs> so if someone calls you and claims to be with a certain company, you can always hang up and call the company back. And you use the company's website to find the official number. And that's a common one also. People will call you and say, hi, we're calling from the bank. You say, oh, really? And they say, yeah, there's a problem with your account. You go, okay, I'll call you right back. You hang up, call back customer service, and they go, no, there's no problem with your account. Uh, if you do answer a call and hear a recording such as, hello, can you hear me? Just hang up. And by the way, they've also got some that start with a person who's going, hey, I'm glad you picked up. I want to talk to you about, and it's a recording. But they record the voice to make it sound like somebody's answering you picking the phone up, knowing that the average person hearing that tone of voice will stay on the line a little bit longer. But... Likewise, the same goes for a call where you're asked to press a number before being connected to a representative. So, hey, press one to speak to our customer health representative about your free knee brace. Ooh, I better press one fast. I need a knee brace. Um, So, (laughs) problem with all of that is it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. And they do this, it's all large numbers. They make billions of phone calls, literally, billions of phone calls. And they know that if they get, you know, one out of a million, they still get a big response. So they, they, they don't care that they're wasting the time of so many people by doing the, what they're doing. So it's a really strange thing that's evolved over the years. Um, I wish they started doing this years ago because I remember years ago saying, why don't they go after the phone providers? They certainly have to have a way to go after the phone providers. And by the way, just because I can predict the future and I understand my audience... I'm going to get at least one response, not below this video, but emailed to me from somebody who says, Steve, I'm an expert in phone companies and how they operate. 
And you are still wrong. The FCC cannot do anything about this. They are powerless to stop this. It's all on the internet. And as a result, the FCC is making an empty thread here. They cannot stop these companies from doing what they're doing. And yet they can. So (laughs) don't bother writing me that email. I'm just letting you know right now. Don't bother. (laughs) You want to put the comment below? I guess I, you know, go right ahead. It's a free country. But the FCC thinks they can do this. So I, 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 I support them. Morally, if nothing else. From CNET, Courtney Jackson wrote, and Richard sent to me, the FCC warns two specific voice providers of severe punishment if they allow the robocallers to continue to use their networks to harass people like me and you. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Your actions are your only true possessions.